I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com and it's part two of the video review of the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom. Is this the ultimate device to get with its fusion of a camera and a smartphone? Let's find out in part two. We jump right into part two of the Samsung Galaxy S4 Zoom full video review by taking a look at the optical zoom on the front. So obviously you have 10x optical zoom here. You can activate it by manually switching it right here on the front or I can come in here and zoom in right here and I'm getting my zoom access. So even at 2.2, you can see what it looks like and I'm doing this real time so you can see boom, I could take that picture. And obviously there's a little bit of fuzz, a little bit of noise in that picture, but we'll take a look at those in just a second. Obviously you've got this ability as well as auto smart expert my mode. So within auto, I'll go ahead and set it right there and you can do expert as well. So if you are an expert, you can adjust all kinds of different stuff here to make this picture as awesome as you wanna make it. And then down here, much like the Galaxy S4, you've got the ability to switch quickly between some of the different effects like grayscale, vintage, and more. And unlike the Galaxy S4 Mini, and much like the Galaxy S4, you've got the previews live in the actual camera application. What you don't get here that you do get on the Galaxy S4, the ability to use the front and rear facing camera simultaneously. So if that's something that's important to you, both the active, actually all of them, the active, the mini, and the zoom do not have that feature. So that's exclusive to the Galaxy S4. If you like that ability, you use it while you travel, which I've used it quite a bit while I travel because it's fun to have front facing and rear facing active at the same time. Remember that and then don't get this device if that's something that's important to you. But we'll take a look at the pictures here just so you can see. Very clear all around, 16 megapixel camera. You can see even the fuzz on that micro SD card adapter. And then I've got a couple of different ones that I've just shot at various angles. And we'll go back here and take a look in the actual application itself. And I'll back out and I'll zoom in using this optical zoom so you can see right here and I'll do it in the camera. So you can take a look at 7.9. See if I can get a lock on it. Let's back out. And I'm doing this, I should say, with the auto settings as well. So I'm kind of trying to do it like a mainstream consumer would do it. At 3.1, at 4.2, there's what it looks like. Definitely some noise in the image. At 3.1, less noise, still a little bit, but we'll take a look here at 3.1 times optical zoom. And you can see, boom, that is what it looks like. So still a very clean picture, even with optical zoom at about 3.1. And you can use this, I should point out as well, to zoom in within the picture itself, boom. Or of course, you can use your fingers if you'd like to use that as well. I'm gonna back out of the camera for a second to thank my partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out with unbiased news and whatever, I should say news about devices and unbiased information as well. So whether you want Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, they'll help you pick what's most important to you at Best Buy Mobile. So back to the software like I was talking about because I want to run a speed test. This is an unlocked device, so no LTE on AT&T or on T-Mobile. What you do get is HSPA Plus. If you're in a market that supports it, I'm going to crank off Wi-Fi so we can activate the HSPA Plus network. Make sure my APN's coming in okay here. More networks. Let's go ahead and set up, not VPN, whoops. Let's go to mobile networks. And let's go down here to APNs and let's see what we've got. And it's the old singular one, but we'll take a look here anyway. Boom, speed test. And then we'll go into, I agree, and we'll do the quadrant standard and, and two, two tests as well. We'll just take a quick look here and see what comes up. So obviously no LTE capabilities, and not only that, but this device is not officially supported by AT&T or T-Mobile. So you can always expect a little bit of a leverage there when it comes to speed tests, but I'm looking at about one megabit per second. Keep in mind, I'm only on HSPA right now though and not on HSPA+. Plus. So there are obviously faster APNs out there that you can use, and there's conversation about which ones work best and which ones don't work best. So figure that out based on what your personal market looks like, and you can find those online. So about one megabit per second on the download, about one megabit per second on the upload, nothing too amazing here, because like I said, this is not an LTE device in the United States. But you got that, and then I'm gonna show you this as well. Quadrant standard, looking decent on this device, not by any stretch of the imagination as good as the Galaxy S4 or the HTC One, but it's a trade-off. And having said that, I will say this as well, Despite having a dual core processor and only 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, it's a relatively fast device. I mean, I don't see a whole lot of lag on this unit. It's relatively quick all around. I said click, relatively quick all around, despite having a lower quadrant standard score. Also, this is what Antutu looks like, as you can see here. So it runs relatively well, and depending on what speed test you prefer, obviously take those with a grain of salt, but it's a decent device all around. I mean, I'm really not seeing any lag or any sort of issues with speed whatsoever as you can see by my real-time testing here. So nothing too crazy or cray-cray 
as they say, all around. The camera's really impressive here. Otherwise, very similar look and feel as typical TouchWiz, though this is the international device, so you'll notice minor differences on this unit versus, let's say, a US Galaxy S4 or a US Galaxy S4 Active. First of all, you'll notice that the messaging area is still black, not white, and that exists across the entire device as well, so not black there. And then when I go to phone, you'll see here also blue icons and compare that to a US Galaxy S4, which this is what it looks like, and I'll show you load this up with the one I have on my desk right here. So you can see differences between the overall look and feel with this being an international device versus the red one to my right being a US-based device. So keep that in mind, little things like that. If you're like me, I like to point out those little things. I think they're kind of fun. This does have watch on as well, so you can utilize this as a TV remote thanks to the IR blaster up top. So I can set this up by setting country or region, USA, and I can run through and have a TV remote and use this not only on my TV at home, but if I can program it, TV at work, TV in the gym, et cetera, just by programming in my personal information. So I like that, and of course, as you would expect, this has the suite of Samsung applications, including S Translator, which is very useful if you're traveling, S Voice, which is a competitor to Siri, Samsung applications, Samsung Hub, Hub Samsung Link, and then of course we'll go into Samsung apps here just to take a look, because in all the Galaxy S4 devices, they've redesigned the look and feel of Samsung apps. Hey, I'm on HSPA Plus now. Go ahead and accept that. 3G, H, HSPA Plus. It's rotating back and forth. It can't decide. A new version is available. I don't want to update right now, but apparently it's going to cancel me out unless I update this. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so it's loading up. Nope, it's not going to let me do it without updating. So I'll have to update that manually. That's one of the little frustrations I have with Samsung applications. Should be able to access the old version. Come on, guys. Overall, the verdict here, though, a decent device all around. You're missing out on stuff and it depends on what is most important to you. If a camera is most important to you, that is the paramount thing. It doesn't matter as much about the phone or the quad-core processor or the specs. This has a very impressive camera with optical zoom and the ability to manually adjust it from the display or from the back here as opposed to doing it through software. And you can see all the different options here. Night mode, animated mode, macro mode, beauty face, landscape, gallery, and then of course auto, which is my preferred method of choice or my preferred setting of choice, I should say. So camera's very good here. Dual core processor though, only 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, only eight gigabytes of storage. So from those, or from that perspective rather, I'll go in here so you can take a look. I'll go to more. From that perspective, if specs are important to you, this is not gonna be the device. And also out of the box, you only have about 4.65 gigabytes of available storage space. So keep all this stuff in mind as you're making this decision because you're gonna have to say, hey, X, Y, and Z are most important to you. So whether that's camera, uh, you know, great camera and that's paramount to everything, this is gonna be a good unit for you, even if you have to buy it unlocked. If you're looking for specs, this is not gonna be the best unit for you. You're better off getting the Galaxy S4, the flagship version, or the HTC One. Just depends on what's most important to you in this crazy game we call mobile. Keep it locked on phonedog.com for more on the Galaxy S4 Zoom. Dogfights will be coming with this device, so stay tuned. Let me know what you wanna see in future videos at phonedog underscore Aaron on Twitter. That is my name, my handle, and then I'm on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker, Google Plus, G plus dot to slash phone dog. Thanks for watching. More to come on the Galaxy S4 Zoom on the site. I'll see you next time.